what's going on, people? It's a brand new episode of the MMA Complex, uh, May the 30th, 2017. My name is Josh. And I'm James. And we got a lot to cover. We got a lot to uh, recap, a lot of news. Um, back with a brand new episode. I'm glad to be here. Um, we got a good episode this week. Yeah. Good episode. Mm-hmm. Got some good guests. We have Steve uh, Mean Machine Garcia. He fights on Bellator next month. Um, he's a Bellator fighter, Bellator uh, bantamweight. And he's a really cool guy, so you're going to get uh, get to know him if you don't know him already. Uh, Steve Garcia is on the show. Also, Iman Barlow, pretty killer Barlow, a Muay Thai champion um, out in the UK right now. Uh, we're going to get to her, too. She's uh, on the show. Great guest. Awesome show. Mm-hmm. we got a lot to cover. Let's get to, uh, get to the news, get to the stuff. And UFC Fight Night 109 was this past weekend. Uh, Gustafson. Uh, successful in his uh, main event fight against Glover Teixeira. What did you think of the fight? Um, I thought he looked good, uh, considering he was out for a while. Um, Teixeira, I, I picked him to win. Yeah. He he lost that. Um, but yeah, I think this is probably one of his best performances in the UFC, and, and I can see him fighting the winner of John Jones in DC in his next fight. Would you give him? Would you give him that number? You think he got the I mean, number one contender status? It's, it's that shallow that division. It is, huh? Where you have to give him. I mean, who else is gonna? Who else is gonna lose their fight for the title? Especially with Anthony Johnson out of the the picture, who made some comments on Twitter about the fight. But yeah, um, and then you got the heat between him and John. I mean, people want to see him and Jones fight again. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's the obvious move to make or match a fight to make. Yeah, he looked good. Um, I guess his last couple of fights. I mean, he it looked like he struggled in his performances. Um, whether he won or lost, and physically, I think he even looked better in this fight. Mm-hmm. Um, his, uh, obviously, his performance is uh, pretty flawless. He did uh, he executed his game plan pretty well. Uh, moved about uh, out of um, you know Glover Teixeira's power hand, and just landed jabs and uppercuts. And I, that the last combination was mm-hmm. his killer man. It was yeah. just like. It was, it was, it was, he, you can see that when one of the shots that he landed on Glover before he finished him, like Glover just looked up, and that, he wasn't even looking. I, was look, I think it was the uppercut, right? Mm-hmm. One of the uppercuts. Yeah. Just um, man, it, it, he was uh, he was on his like, squishy. He was on like wobbly legs at that point, and yeah. it, was, it was a really awesome finish. Uh, great performance. Um, and you know, I I could see him getting the next title shot. I mean, why not? He's already got bad blood between um, between Jones. He's already commented that. He's hoping that Cormier beats Jones, and I, I, yeah, I would put him right there. The the division's really shallow right now. Yeah, yeah, it's always been that division. Mm-hmm. That's it's always been shallow. I think the that division, the heavyweight division. Yeah, you know, it'd be interesting right now. To, like I know Luke Rockhold's in like a limbo. limbo right now with the middleweight division. Um, it'll be nice to if he were to jump into light heavyweight. Mm-hmm. He wants to fight Verdun at heavyweight. He wants to fight. I, I think he's just go. It's a little too much. Um, not that he can't beat Verdun. I think skill wise, I think they match up pretty fairly, and, and he's a big guy too. So size wise, it wouldn't be too much of a difference. But but the you know light heavyweight, I think he'll be cool. Heavy, a nice addition to heavyweight, light heavyweight, if you were mm-hmm. to make the move. Yeah, not for sure. Yeah. I, mean, I think a lot of guys in the middleweight division should go to two hundred five. Nice of uh, Rockhold versus Gustafson. Why don't we should go to two hundred five? Why should go to two? He needs to get out of the 185 division. Yeah, and his next fight against uh, Calvin is a bad fight for him. Yeah, I'm wondering if, like, after a while, we're gonna start to see some of the middleweight guys go to light heavyweight because that division needs it. And um, I know they had a couple of con- uh, contenders on this uh, card that um, that fought, uh, fights in light, light fight in light heavyweight, but um, they're not big enough yet to even scratch the surface of the the main eventers. Yeah. Um, but I thought with Gustafson, I think he, you know, he. After the layoff, he had a little bit of layoff. He just had a baby. Um, obviously, proposed to his, his girl at the end of the fight, which he looked super nervous. And <laughs> I feel yeah. like, uh, I was surprised that nobody asked him like what if he was like more nervous for the fight. I mean, I think I think he had a win. Them. He had a win to propose to his girlfriend. Yeah, I think he had a win. But I mean, I don't know. It's just really it was really corny and that he did it in, in the cage. Yeah, with, yeah he's really been with that cliche. girl for he's been with his girl for a while though. I think. Yeah. But yeah. the, the way he did it was just, yeah, yeah. yeah I would never do it. <laughs> Not with like a thousands of fans? <laughs> no, you got the no. coaches, you got, no. Nah. No? I mean, was, it, they seem to say no like in that, in that situation? No, of course not. No, no, no. She would never say no, no, no. And she's been with him long enough, and they just had a kid right now. So, I mean, yeah. But I think I think any girl w- would say yes just because 
the, the kind of situation they're in. I don't know. I mean, there are people that have not, like in large stadiums yeah. or like big, you know, they've that walked out. I mean, I've seen some yeah. stuff online. I gotta see that because that's pretty it's not, funny. It's not always uh, the case. But yeah, it was it was bad. It's a risk. Um, yeah, you didn't like the proposal, huh? No, not no? at all. <laughs> it was, was kind of it was really cheesy. <laughs> Where would she? Where would she? Where would she have? He had have done it, like in the private, like private, private, private. Yeah, private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Well, or like, or like in your case with friends, with close friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. different. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. But on pay per view, or I'm not pay per view, but on television. Yeah. Live audience. Yeah. You just fought. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bad place to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a risky place to do it for sure, but um. I think he's probably he was probably confident. Oh yeah, because like, like you said, yeah. been together for a long time. Yeah, but the fight overall was good. I mean, I I don't know where Glover comes goes from here. I think, I mean, he's still a name in the division. He's taken some, um, he's taken a lot of punishment over the years. I think he's kind of starting to slow down now. Yeah. Um, he's older in age. You know, it would have been interesting to see him in his prime, but you know, he's older in his age in the UFC, but he's older in his age now, and I think. Um, it's starting to catch up with him. You're starting to see a little bit. I mean, he could be contenders like an OSP or something like that. Like guys that are still, you know, trying to develop themselves. I yeah. think he does pretty good, but I think against the top of the division, I think he's, he's struggled as of late. Gustafson, um, Anthony Johnson, you know, like John Jones or at the top of the division has, has pretty uh, dominated him basically. Mm. Um, this was another sign of that. And, and his attack is so, um, I, I, I would say I want to say that he's a one-dimensional fighter because he's got really good ground and mm -hmm. wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But his attack is, I mean, you kind of know where he's gonna come from. Mm -hmm. You know, like Gustafson throws all angles, but Glover, he's kind of just has that boxing style. He's it, yeah. And, and you know where he's. He's very flat-footed. He he's move. very flat-footed. Yeah. He yeah. Move around too much. Yeah. But um. No, I, I I I enjoyed the fight. I thought it was a good a good showing, and glad that Gustafsson got a win in Sweden because mm -hmm. the last outing over in Sweden didn't go too well. He got knocked out, right? Yeah, he got knocked out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, overall, it was a good fight and um, good card. And this weekend's really? gonna, this, this, <laughs> this, this weekend's gonna be an awesome freaking yeah awesome card. I'm looking forward to this. It was a good weekend. fight, but I don't know, but the card was kind of lackluster. What this this yeah this past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was okay, but they had some good finishes in there, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was an underrated card for sure. It was a, I mean, the the matchups weren't that exciting, but some of the finishes were were pretty unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, that was, was good. It was all right. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it wasn't completely a a, a dull home card. Run, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a home run for sure. Um, but yeah. So I mean, with the with these uh, European events, you know, they they've been they haven't been to Sweden since. Gustafson's last outing there, and then, um, I mean, they haven't been to Ireland in forever. Uh, I think they're going back to, um, what's it called, uh, Scotland soon. Mm. So I think with uh, you, um, Joanne. Uh, jo yeah, Joanne, Joanne Calderwood. Calderwood. Yeah. So, I mean, they're doing these, uh, you know, European events here and there, but not as much as they used to. Yeah, I think, I think the new owners are just trying to pay that debt off. Yeah, stay in the, sta <laughs> stay in the States and do a couple yeah, of no, local right? shows. Yeah. yeah. But, but um, I mean, yeah, also in the news, um, there's a completely different fighter, completely different division, a completely different gender. You have we're going into the 145 pound division. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the stories that I thought was pretty interesting is this reluctance of uh, Jermaine Duranime, the champ of 145 pound division, um, not wanting to fight Cyborg, and she's being a little bit more outspoken this week, this past week, saying the reasons why she doesn't want to fight her, calling her a proven cheater, um, saying that. You know, she doesn't want to, she doesn't deserve the title. She doesn't deserve a title shot. Um, and then now she's saying that she's, uh, she sees 135 division in her future. That's where she's going to stay. Um, that's where she's headed next, she says. And that if the UC wants her to match up against Cyborg, that they can just strip her of her title because she's refusing to do it. What do you think about all this, all this drama with Jermaine? I, um, I think she's making a re excuse in the book not to fight. Um, cyborg, the fact yeah. that she, 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 I mean, she can't believe that she's not the, that cyborg doesn't deserve the title shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, that division was made, I think, for cyborg. I mean, she's, um, she's proven that she's not only the, the greatest 145 pound fighter out there, but she's also the greatest female fighter 
out there. I mean, she's, I mean, in yeah. MMA, no one can beat her. Yeah. Um. So just like that, that should be fought. I mean, she deserves it probably for that title. Yeah. Um. I think that um, that she's just making every excuse not to fight her, and I think it makes her look bad, and the fans see through, you know, right through it, and mm-hmm. it's just, she's become this giant heel because of it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, she's looking. I mean, I've never seen a, a champ do this. You know, someone that's ha- hold the title to not in this way before you even have a name, really. You know what I mean? Like people have maybe established themselves and refused to fight certain contenders at the time. It happens, but uh, but they've they're already kind of established in the division, or they they have like a big following and they have a lot of weight behind them. With Jermaine, it's like. No one really, really, outside of the hardcore fan base, no one really knows who you are. Um, even the hardcore fan base doesn't really care for you that much. Mm-hmm. And then people, a lot of people yes, felt no. like you might not really have even deserved the title just based on how you won against Holly. Um, and and now you're refusing to fight the number one contender who a lot of people feel is the rightful champ of that division, uh, the uncrowned champion. Yeah. And just blatantly throwing out every excuse in the book not to fight her it's just i think it's, i've never seen anything like it really and kind of especially after winning the title just kind of going into I hiding hope, pretty yeah. much because mm-hmm. she knows what's next it's weird yeah. never and, seen and, and she's yeah she's and, and i think that she's content to be called the champion or to have a uc belt so if she gets shipped for the title she could say well i was a uc champion at one time yeah but no one's gonna take her seriously because the way she acted after that title Win against yeah. Holly Holm, um, and, and then too, the, the, you know, the UFC is probably like, you know, putting their head through a wall right now. Yeah, you know, having that division that your champion not want to fight the number one person, they pretty much want, are saying that she's going to thirty five and vacate that belt. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm thinking that I don't, I don't I'll be surprised if they strip her of the title because I, I, we haven't heard any comments from the UFC or Dana White or anything like that. Um, I'll be surprised if they strip her the title. I wouldn't, you know, doubt that they would ever not do it. But they should, they should just sign Megan Anderson, have Megan fight her. Yeah, yeah, they should. I mean, uh, I, I think while they're figuring out this fight with uh, Jermaine, just yeah, set up the Megan fight. You know, uh, unify that title with Invicta and all that, and you know, sucks for Invicta, huh? Sucks for Invicta. They're losing the champion, and the champion. and then seeing the champion not even give a crap about basically their, wins the title and yeah. just like is already it's jumping you know, shit. yeah i want to go to ufc it's sad yeah yeah it I is sad like you bite the hand that feeds you basically yeah so i i think she's gonna oh, i hope she loses this fight <laughs> <laughs> but i mean or i mean they they get jermaine to really just step up and do it and then i, I see that fight just ending quickly yeah, right. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, when she loses, she probably blame the steroids. Or... Yeah, especially because she doesn't want to be there. And it's just, like I see her just. It's almost like crumbling. Like, it's almost like a like a kid being scared to fight somebody after school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then going through go every excuse. And yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's not gonna. <laughs> when it happens, <laughs> it's people are gonna see why you were making all those excuses in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I definitely see it going that way. And I mean, we'll see what happens because there hasn't been any word from the UFC or Dana White. Um, I don't think anybody's really asked him or had an opportunity to ask him just yet. But I mean, you look at the what's everything that's coming out from Jermaine's side; it's just not good. And then you have Cyborg on kind of like this media tour almost, and also also being in the news with the whole Fighter Summit. Mm. Um, kind of, she's she's kept her name in the spotlight, and I think a lot of people are excited to see what happens with her. But it's just crazy. It's crazy to see what's going on with that division and. And the, the drama and the, the fact that we don't even know, it, like, who necessarily is even in the division. You know, the, the, like, who's on the roster? I don't even know who the... It's who's pretty much 135ers fighting at 145. Yeah, just the big ones that can, like, move over. Yeah. But yeah. I, think, I think that being an action fight, look, I mean, it makes sense. Have them fight. Let Cyborg deal with their, with their stuff. And then if Megan wins, or the winner between that fight, you have to fight Cyborg. Yeah. You can't deny Cyborg that, that opportunity. No, no. And then, it's her division. and then with the division to fill it up, I mean, obviously I think UFC better act quick because I know Bellator is snatching up some of the girls. 
They got some names over there. Yeah, I don't know why the UFC even had to create this division for. Yeah, I mean they had no one signed. They had no one signed. There are two one forty five pound fighters. Yeah, and I mean they should have started with this division a long time ago. I think because they had they already had Cyborg under contract mm-hmm. with Invicta, and they're having to fight at one forty, which makes no sense at yeah, all. Yeah, no makes no sense at all. So um, they're making themselves, you know, pretty much kill yourself to make that weight, and then a few weeks later they make one forty five pound division. Yeah. And I mean, the only option I think would be uh, to maybe do. I don't know what the the, the next season of Tough's going to be. Um, if, I don't think oh, God. I don't know if one forty five <laughs> women is a part of it because I no, know they had tryouts flyweights. recently. It's flyweights, huh? Yeah, one twenty five. So they should have did one forty five. Um, Didn't they get rid of that show? Unless, unless they snatch up the Invicta girls, which is probably going to happen. Which is probably going to happen. Yeah, to fill up at least a, a s- small roster of girls. Yeah, and just to let them fight it out, but. We'll see what happens with that. Um, so, but we're gonna get to our first guest. Yes. Start, start off the show with uh, Steve Garcia, uh, the Meme Machine. Steve Garcia uh, fights on in Bellator at 181 on July 14th um, in Oklahoma. So he's uh, he's fighting Joe Warren, and we're gonna talk to him a little bit about that and other things. So here's uh, Steve Garcia. All right, uh, Steve Garcia, man, uh, Bellator bantamweight uh, coming up. Uh, Bellator 181 against Joe Warren. You got a fight coming up soon. Uh, July 14th. How's everything going for you? How's everything? How are you feeling? Thank you for being on the show, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Everything's going good. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, I'm feeling good, man. This is actually a big fight for me, so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's something I've been waiting for, so I uh, I just want to live up to hype and go up there and just, you know, do what I do best, you know, put some hands on them and uh, get that finish. Yeah, you know, because Joe Warren is pretty much a poster boy. Well, one of the boys, guys in Bellator, especially for that bantamweight division. And he's been there for a long time. He's a veteran of the sport. Um, he's a great grappler. Have you, have you brought anybody in um, to Jackson's to kind of like, emulate his, his, his wrestling or or are you just, just training as, as, as normal? Um, no, well, I mean, that's a good thing about me training at Jackson's yeah. that you have so many partners. Yeah. Um, and we just have a wide variety. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, we have a lot of guys that simulate um, – his similarities to what he does. Uh, I work a lot with, uh, like, Ray Borg for this camp is a good mm-hmm. one. It's a good one. Uh, John Dotson's another one. Diego Sanchez is another one. Um, and then we actually have this guy from, I want to say, Rush, Russia. We have another guy from Polish. His name's uh, Sebastian. Mm. Homeboy's just, just a Jax. Uh, yeah. Polish fighter. Very strong. So I'm just having guys just, you know, pretty much just trying to, you know, get a hold of me and just take me to the cage, take me down, try to control. Um, that's more or less what we're doing. But we have, you know, all American wrestlers from, you know, different colleges and stuff. And, you know, the best of the best strikers, you know. So um, I'm not saying I'm not worried about a striking, but that is not my main concern in this fight. It's always going to be definitely uh, stopping the takedown. Right. Uh, moving, you know. I, I, I just I watched uh, Dante's last fight and it was it was a uh, a really good blueprint. I'm I'm definitely gonna do something a little different. I plan on finishing him. Dante's what he didn't wasn't able to do that. Um, I see myself doing that. Yeah. Uh, that just that's just kind of how I am. I you know I'd rather kill it be killed. You know what I mean? That's that's more or less what I like to do. Yeah. You know it's it's, it's gonna be it's gonna unfold in, in the cage. You know here here in about a month or two. So. Yeah. I'm just excited to display it. Yeah, over at Jackson's, I'm sure you have no shortage of like uh, training partners and top quality guys, man. It's, it's. I mean, everybody you just named is like, they're killers. Top notch, yeah. top notch, including yourself. So it's, it's, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Um, now, you, what was it like when you got the call for this fight? I mean, was it something that you took right away? Did you have to talk about it with your management or the guys at Jackson's, or you know, it was it something that you just agreed to, or uh, how did that go? Um, no, we actually, we've been kind of bugging, uh, Bellator just like, dude, you know, what, what, what's going to happen? Um, they, they threw out one of the champions that they were thinking about signing. And I was like, I don't care. Just give him a card. Like just, you know, cause I was supposed to fight Tomongolo and it fell through. Yeah. And then that I got another offer to go to Italy and fight, uh, this Bellamonte guy. He didn't take the fight. So I'm just trying to find a fight, you know, and, and they're like, no, no, we're going to try to get you on as, as, as quickly as possible. And then, like, a month goes by, and I'm just kind of, like, I feel like I'm dangling my feet. But, you know, it gives me more time to get better, so I'm cool with it. Um, so, technically, 
they, they, they gave us a call and they're like, hey, like, how would you feel going back or fighting in July? Is that a good time? I'm like, yeah, I was like, this month would have been a good time frame or something, you know? Yeah. So, uh, which is like, you know what? I'm going to find an opponent for you uh, for July 14th. I was like, cool. And then they, he, he uh, shot my dad a text saying, is Joe Warren a, a fitable opponent? Opponent, And he's actually one that I knew I was eventually going to have to step in front of eventually. So yeah. uh, I was I was more than willing to accept it. You know, I'm not here to, you know, beat around the bush, just fight nobody's. Like, I'm willing to fight anybody. I've never turned down any fights that they've ever uh, asked me to fight. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm just... Like I said, it's. I feel like it's about time. Right, and as I said before, you know, Joe Warren's a, like one of those names who's been there forever. Um, do you see this fight as kind of like a stepping stone to, to get into that top five uh, in the bantamweight division? Um, stepping stone. If it is, it is. But I, I'm not. I, I really can't look at it that way. Yeah. Um, I have to set my own path, and and I'm not gonna necessarily try to use anybody to do it but if that happens then it is like it is what it is right yeah there's too many people that try to pad the records or um take easy fights and and some of them do really well and some of them don't or like they do really good and then they end up finding someone that's really tough and then they fold yeah. um that's why i made sure that i haven't turned on anybody and then i have a lot of amateur fights at least you know mma wise i have yeah. about uh, amateur, I have like 14, 14 uh, amateur fights. So I feel like it really brought me up. And I fought anybody and whoever, um, 135 and 145. And, uh, and we made the change to go pro. Um, like I said, I never turned down anybody. My second fight was Sean Bunch. And I was I was an 8 to 100 out fight. So, yeah. you know, I'm willing for the challenge. I'll accept it, you know. Yeah. And they said when they offered you to fight that your your dad uh, kind of they talked to your dad. So your dad's your manager. Yeah, my dad's yeah. my manager, my conditioning coach. He uh, okay. he runs his own business and stuff too. Uh, you know, he knows a lot about the business world. Mm -hmm. uh, we're both kind of new to the, to the MMA thing. It's not like we're a bunch of fighters. You know, you know, boxers and and thick kid boxers and jiu jitsu guys. Like we don't have that that background yeah. in my family. All of it is pretty much street, but. Yeah. Uh, that's that's we're just kind of new about it and 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 we just had people along the way that were you know charismatic enough to help us yeah that's a lot of questions yeah oh by the way man happy late birthday oh thanks dude. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah you know like you like you're you're young man like you're only what 25 years old um your record is outstanding i think i think most of your wins are are by tk or knockout i think your last loss was against you know ricky by via split decision um, after yeah. this this next fight, you know, considering you win this fight, you have anybody that you want to call out, or do you want to, you know, rematch with Ricky and get that win back? After this fight, yeah. Oh well, yeah, my 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 plan is to make a statement with Joe Warren and then yeah. go and call out uh, Dantes because, or or the winner. I, I think I don't know if they they've set it up yet to do the rematch with him and Caldwell. Yeah. Uh, I want that winner. You know, I was going to do the same thing after the Tamangula fight. Um, I've had, I think six or seven fights in Bellator. It's not like I've, I'm like new, you know, mm -hmm. I've been here Yeah. Uh, and whoever they stick in front of me, Joe Warren just came, his last fight was the championship fight. So I feel like it's, it's definitely, uh, puts me in the mix. Right. And you, you had training earlier today, but then, um, you're talking about your, your day job. What, what's your day job? Do uh, I do, um, I do some like accounting stuff for uh, an insurance oh, company. Wow. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Gotta, I gotta make some more money. I'm not quite there yet. You know, it's where I can train full time. But my bosses, they, they, they're very, uh, they're very giving, and um, they, they allow me to do what I need to do to train. So uh, they're, they're yeah. good. Uh, they're a good company to work for. The Streamline Insurance. So um, they're one of my sponsors. I always definitely give them props, and they just like get your work done and go train. So yeah. you know, I'm blessed for sure. Does everybody awesome. gather around for your fights? Or like, how are they super? Obviously, they're super supportive. But that's that's something that interesting to have like a, a bellator top bellator fighter working in your yeah. office i'm sure it's kind of weird for them no <laughs> yeah it's funny because they, they always talk about it and then like they had they had uh pictures of me and signed posters and just different stuff so then they would have clients come in and they're like they're like look at his whole office and they would see me and then they're like wow who is this guy and he's like oh he's right down the hall uh <laughs> And then they would come and, and, and talk to me, but it, it hasn't happened in a while because they had moved to California. So yeah. I'm kind of, you know, a little bit of the situation here uh, in uh, New Mexico. 
Um, but they, you know, they'd always check in every day pretty much and just make sure everything's going smooth. And like I said, as long as we're getting our jobs done here, we're good. Yeah. They don't care. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about that. <laughs> it must be awesome like, to walk in your office knowing you can kick anybody's ass in that room. <laughs> <laughs> it must be awesome to walk into work knowing they can kick anybody's ass in that room. <laughs> People don't mess with me. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, talk about like uh, the relationship you have with Bellator and like how it's been for you because you have a lot of obviously their Bellator is you know coming up in terms of uh, signing all these free agents. They got just you guys just got Roy Nelson. Um, a big fight in New York with a bunch of you know former UFC fighters, and uh, I think a lot of people are getting attracted to Bellator now, especially with Scott Coker involved and and just yeah. the, the sponsors and you name it, TV deal. Uh, what, what was, what's your uh, take on the whole environment over at Bellator? Um, so I so I was with them when actually uh, Bajoran Revney was running the the gig, and I was one of the few fighters that they actually kept around. So. I was actually pretty happy. I mean, there's, there's, you know, the top guys that you probably see, you know, like Michael Chandler and all them still that are still around, but um, that they had currently signed along with Jordan Revenue's uh, crew. And then Viacom comes in and replaces him with Scott Coker. So um, I really haven't developed a, a amazing bond with Scott Coker uh, quite yet, but I, I'm really tight with Richard Cho, which is a matchmaker. And then all the whole staff, I've always, I've always gotten along with them. Um, and they always took care of me. Like I have nothing bad to say about them. Even when I've talked to Scott Coker, he's always just he's like, "Well, I appreciate you working hard and, and putting on shows for us and stuff." And you know, that's that's technically all I need. You know, just yeah. to, just to kind of be able to have that conversation and and not be a negative one. You know what I mean? Mm, right. Uh, so uh, you know, all of all those guys are very professional. They uh, they get the job done. So I have no complaints. Um, every time I've been around, they 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 take care of me. And two weeks after your fight, your your teammate John Jones is in defense, is in a fight for the light heavyweight title over at the UFC for UFC two fourteen. Um, will you be there in attendance? And 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 how's uh how's uh, John Jones doing in the gym right now? Oh, he's doing he's doing great, man. Uh, what's what's awesome about this this uh, this camp is I've actually worked with him for uh, multiple hours, you know, working on different stuff just yeah. because. Uh, me and him are really long for our division, and uh, me and my coach uh, Mike Winkle John and uh, Chad Smith, we've actually been working with with John quite a bit, and it's it's nice because I'm able to kind of pick his brain a little bit, trying to take stuff away. I think will be very useful, um, not just in this fight, but for my longevity career. Um, but he's looking he's looking great. I mean, there's never been a, a day that I've seen him where he looks horrible. Really, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's such a monster. Uh, but you know what? He's he's the greatest of all time. People people can say what they want about him. He did have, and and he I don't know his personal life, but I mean he may or may not have um, the best track record when it comes to making the right choices. Yeah. Uh, but you can't take away his legitimacy in the in the cage. Right. And guy guy, you know you just you just you know you talk to him and you see him and you just feel his presence just of. In my, I don't know. In me, it's just it's just an obvious, yeah, uh, right. sensation that, that like he he he, uh, you know he, um, uh, puts off. Yeah. And it's, it's very strange. You don't see that very often, to where you can just talk to somebody and like you're cool with them, and then all of a sudden you get on the mat with him, and you know we, we mess around. He's he's a lot bigger than I am, but you know we'll mess around and we'll, we'll shadow box, and uh, he'll show me a couple of drills and stuff, and it's just crazy. He, guys, huge. You know, yeah, guys just. Yeah. Uh, but he's doing good. He's, he's, I mean, you already know the grudge between him and <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's an exciting one. Yeah. Yeah. It's even more motivating for him. Um, but yeah, man, he's, he's, he's definitely, a, a an amazing dude in the gym. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the John Jones I see, you know, he's right. a hard work grinder mm-hmm. and he, you know, he always has a good attitude. So, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's good to go, man. He's good yeah. to go. So your your fight's coming up in July fourteenth. Um, how often? How soon are you going to head out to Oklahoma? Are you going to do it the week uh, of, or they normally fly me out like on. So the fight's on Friday. They normally fly me out like on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll probably be there on Tuesday. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Windstar Casino. There's nothing around there besides whatever's in the casino. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's kind of hard. Even the sauna is like, 
I think 45 minutes away. So you, it's, it's just hard, especially with the newer, uh, uh, like the way and stuff is going on at like 10 a.m. and 12 a.m. So mm-hmm. that means like five in the morning, excuse me. And, uh, and then you got to, you know, shuttle down there. And the one time that I did use the, the sauna, it was cold. You know, we had to wait, like, we had to wait 30 minutes for them to kick it on. And, um, it was just, it just was a pain. So, um, you know, just a different, uh, way to kind of cut weight while we're down there. Like I said, it's not one of my favorite places. I mean, I fought in, I fought in Memphis and that was dope. That was, that was cool. Um, I mean, fought in Connecticut. That was, that was kind of far. Um, and I had some injuries going on in that fight, but that was a cool place, you know, but they, they like me at that Windstar Casino. So, uh, you know, that's that's where I'm shining. So that's where yeah. we go. Oh, awesome. Nice, nice. Well, Steve, uh, the only thing is coming on the show, it was, it was really great uh, speaking with you. And uh, we're both looking forward to your fight against Joe Warren. And hopefully we'll we'll see you fight for a title maybe this year or maybe next year. But uh, before you go, let the fans know where they can find your social media and maybe plug some of your sponsors as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. One, thank you guys for having me on. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's always a pleasure getting to, you know, do this with you guys. And um, yeah, definitely. These guys can find me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm mainly on, on Instagram, more or less. And then, you know, other two, I'm on every once in a while. But uh, yeah, you can hit me up at Me Machine 505. Uh, that's, you know, those are my my handles. And then just Facebook is just Steve Garcia. And then I have a fan page. It's Steve Me Machine Garcia. So um yeah just you know just come and follow me you, you'll be able to see a lot of my teammates uh uh that i train with and some of them you know they're they're goofballs and some of them are crazy so uh <laughs> you know sometimes i'll have some stuff on there that people might like so cool, yeah just yeah no problem no problem no problem all right, all right man um we look forward to your fight coming up and then uh hopefully i'll be on the show again soon yeah best of luck steve best of luck man thank you guys thank you for having me all right Appreciate take care it. take have care day. And that was Steve Garcia fights uh, this uh, July 14th uh, over in Oklahoma for Bellator 181 or yeah 181 um, against Joe Warren. So thank you for Steve for being on the show. Uh, we also have uh, Iman Barlow coming up. But first, uh, we'll talk about a couple of quick hits uh, in terms of the news. Uh, we have Roy Nelson signing with Bellator. I think big it's, move by Bellator right here. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good it's a good move by Bellator. A good move by Roy Nelson. Um, he wasn't doing much at the heavyweight division. I think he could fight guys at heavyweight mm-hmm. who are closer to his, you know, like win more fights, and then he can win the title. Um, he can have his sponsorship money back. A lot of positives for Bellator and Roy. Yeah. Um, it's just a clear indication of what the the flaws in the UFC are. Yeah, I think uh, Bellator is really capitalizing on um, the free on agent market. Yeah. The free agent market. Uh, they have a lot of money behind them, a lot of uh, really good people in that organization that are, you know, um, like like uh, like uh, Scott Coker that are really luring people over because there's nothing but good things that they hear. And um, we got to you know a few of the people over at Bellator, and they're really, really, they're well organized and really people that are approachable, yeah. approachable, and they're they're really dedicated to making a really good product, and that's what they're doing. And you're seeing people have success like Roy McDonald, and you have Czech Congo over there, Mitrione, Fedor. I mean, Roy Nelson is just another great addition. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So, I mean, I think the UFC loses out on somebody. I mean, obviously, Roy is kind of on he, – he was on a rough patch for sure, um, especially at the top of the division. But he's still – I a mean, name. in the in the top uh, – big name and um, definitely in the top ten. I call him a gatekeeper. Yeah, for sure of the heavyweight division. You can't get Roy Nelson, then you're you're nowhere near the the top of the division. Yeah, if you can't if you can't get past him. Yeah, so. but, and and then him and Jay White, you know, never saw eye to eye. So never. Yeah, and he's I lasted in the UFC for quite a long time, and it's surprising to see him not be in the UFC. But I think it's a good move for him financially, uh, career wise. I think it takes him take a little time and fight towards the end of the year. Yeah, he, he's up there in age, so yeah. I think I think fighting in Bellator is a perfect fit. Maybe after this uh, next. Uh, Bellator card in New York, you could fight the winner of Mitrione versus Fedor. Yeah. So and I think uh, him and Mitrione have already been trading uh, kind of jabs. jabs on Twitter and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm excited for that matchup. He's a great addition. Uh, you got Czech Congo over there too. So, um, you know, I think it's just another Probably example Lashley. of Bellator yeah. just, you know, capitalizing on UFC's misfortunes and the, the way they're handling stuff. 
and people are obviously disappointed and upset over at UFC. I mean, at the, the Fighter Summit, it was a clear indication of chaos, the chaos, <laughs> and an example of the disconnect between the UFC owners and uh, the new management and fighters, and mm-hmm. and they're just not happy. And I can see it, it's going to continue. I think this is one of the biggest stories. See who who goes. Yeah. Um, another thing in the news is this weekend uh, you have a UFC pay per view Max Holloway versus Aldo, but on the card um, you have Vitor Balfour, and Vitor Balfour is fighting Nate Marquardt. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I think the last fight on his contract, I believe. Yeah. Um, and this might be either Vitor's retirement fight or his last fight in the UFC before he goes to another or to another organization like either. Bellator or Ryzen or like so I don't know what do you think uh, the legacy of Vitor in the UFC and what do you see his future being would you like him to stop would you like him to maybe go to another organization what do you think um, I think it's it's cloudy for sure just because of all the all the uh, server use and mm-hmm. I think I think he's gonna be I mean people are gonna always respect him just because he was there from the beginning yeah. but I think his legacy is a bit clouded and I think I want him. I, I don't want to assume him compete anymore. I think. I think he will. I think he'll go to a, a Ryzen or or a Bellator. I don't want to assume him compete, and I'm kind of happy that this is his last fight on his contract. Yeah, I think Bellator. I think if he were to go to Bellator, I think it would be just as equal. Of, I, I, I don't know. I think it would be a bad move. I think he should either retire or go somewhere that's not necessarily going to drug test him. That's what yeah. I think. Who gives um, him needles for free? Yeah, like go to like a Ryzen or maybe somewhere in. Europe, I don't know, um, Russia. Um, Are but you hinting that they gave steroids in Japan? <laughs> I, I think they look the other way for sure. But um, I think Ryzen would be a perfect spot for him. You know, fight a kid, you know, once or twice a year in Ryzen. Freak, like a freak fight against like yeah. a janitor from a school. Yeah, and then you know, <laughs> because we obviously see what kind of condition he's in. I mean, he still has a hand speed. He still, you know, can get into you know physical condition, but. He doesn't look the same anymore. He's older. Yeah. Um, you know, he can't compete with the, with uh, guys that are super talented in the top of the divisions the way he is. The new breed of MMA fighters. Yeah, today. the new breed. He can't keep up anymore. Um, maybe back when he was fighting like uh, Anthony Johnson in Rio and all around that time was like maybe his last good, uh, run. good run of be, being at least semi clean. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he still kind of looked normal around that time. Yeah, now you just have super super athletes. Yeah, and now now the get the guys are younger, faster, and they're just talented. And he's slowed down. Um, he can't keep up anymore. Um, so if he was a if he's gonna stay clean, um, I think he should either just retire or um, yeah, just retire. <laughs> I think yeah, unless he chooses to continue and go to like a Japan and some fight over there and then just juice up. Yeah, I mean that's the only that's the only thing. I and agree. Make some money. Why not? Um, I think I don't see him stopping. I see him probably going to Japan, and I think that's going to be the next stop for him. I think if he goes to Bellator, yeah. it's just going to—he's going to get smashed by lesser known guys. Yeah, I think it's a bad move. But I enjoyed him. I enjoyed him in the UFC. It's obviously been a controversial figure. Um, he's a poster for, boy for like TRT. For TRT. So you know you can't you can't fault him for that. Always loved watching him fight, um, whether on TRT or not. Um, so uh, sad to see him. You know. Curious to see how it will go this weekend. Uh, but we're going to get to our next guest, uh, Iman Barlow. She's multi- multiple-time uh, kickboxing champion, more Muay Thai kickboxing champion. Uh, fights out of in, in the UK, and um, we have her on the show, so we'll get to know um, Iman Barlow. So Iman Barlow, Lion Fight and Infusion Fight uh, champion, world champion. Thank you for uh, being on the show. Uh, glad to have you here. How's everything going? Yeah, all good, thank you. Just finished a session, um, had a shower, so uh, it's nine o'clock here, so I'm ready to go to bed soon. That's oh, right, wow. yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> again, again, thank you for scheduling this time. I know uh, with the time difference and your training, because yeah. you have a fight coming up soon that, you know, it's been it's been a little bit of a challenge, but I'm glad to have you on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no worries, thank you. Yeah, you know, so your next fight is July 8th. We're very excited to see you compete, but um, we're, like, um, reading stuff about you online, we both read that your first fight was at four years old, and that's kind of crazy. 
Talk about yeah. that and, and who are you fighting? Some like little girl on the playground? What's going on? What happened? <laughs> um, so I got into training when I was two and a half oh my because God. my father is my trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mom also used to fight. So instead of getting a babysitter, they obviously used to take classes and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I just used to go and play with my toys. And then soon enough, I just started joining in. Um, wanted to copy the adults. Um, and I had my first fight at the age of four. Um, I don't remember much about it, but, you know, I just remember as a kid traveling up and down the country every weekend to to compete what we call here at Inter Clubs. Yeah. So, you know, the kid fighting with shin pads and all the protection. Um, but I just loved it. I had a buzz for it. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Was that pretty much the, the only sport that you gravitated towards growing up was, was kickboxing? Muay Thai? Um, no, when I was at school, I was about um, eight or nine. I had a... Um, well, I didn't have a passion for it, but I was quite good at cross country, we call it here, oh, like geez. athletics and running. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of, because I was fit anyway, fitter than the other kids, I used to do really well and used to win all the time. Yeah. So if I was winning, I used to enjoy <laughs> that as well. So I did that up until I was about 16. I was, um, you know, really good, top of the county. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I suffered a back injury. So I've never, like, oh. competed running. And it got to the stage where I had to kind of choose as well, you know, and, yeah. and Thai boxing has always been my first love oh, that's awesome. crazy so besides like running and then kicking people in the head yeah. as a kid did you have any outside hobbies like did you play with dolls or hang out with friends or it was pretty much just kicking ass and running <laughs> uh i think i used to play with friends and i used to do a little bit of horse riding as well oh, okay uh, but obviously most of my nights were took up by training you know yeah. so as a kid it was school and training but i didn't see it as a a chore then it was fun and all my friends trained as yeah. well so it used to be like you know kind of a laugh oh, wow. what was it like uh, watching your parents compete and seeing them did you get uh, did you get well, to see them compete often or no i can't really remember there's a picture yeah. of me and my mom when she had her last fight and i was okay. about five or six okay um but i can't really remember okay i don't remember what i had for dinner <laughs> oh wow <laughs> and how about your father i know did he when did, did he stop competing after a while or um no he never really competed oh, okay. he, he was, was a more a of yeah just kind of a okay. trainer and, nice. and enjoyed the sport yeah awesome. and, and and so you're saying that your friends competed too as well as, as yourself um well i suppose they weren't my friends outside the gym they were kind mm. of friends from the gym oh, okay. um do you know what i mean so yeah. they kind of became my like i had two sets of friends okay because i was saying man you guys when i went out to the club you guys would be some dangerous <laughs> girls <laughs> yeah no none of my friends do it i don't know why they get all nervous when i fight so i don't think oh, they'd really? want to uh, oh, man. And, and and talk about your your fight coming up uh you're defending your t- your belt for what the fifth time i think yeah yeah um are uh, you excited yeah, yeah. yeah you're excited to do uh to compete against uh and what july 8th is coming up soon yeah yeah so um it will actually be my 100th fight my mm-hmm. 100th uh, professional yes. fight so that's a special thing for me um and to do it on an infusion show you know in a different country and be you know main event is kind of something special so Mm -hmm. i feel like it's kind of you know fitted in perfect um my opponent's ashley nichols um obviously i knew her from the infusion reality i did that with her Mm -hmm. i didn't fight her there but you know I, i i know her well and she's a um a nice girl and i know she'll be a strong opponent so yeah. you know it's even a kind of makes the occasion even bigger yeah. um so obviously it's july the 8th going to a new country going to canada um i'm really excited awesome yeah you know canada is a, gr- a great place to to, to visit like, like you're pretty yeah. lucky to go there but um are you planning to uh, go out there like maybe weeks in advance just to be you know coming in with the time zone and all that stuff yeah, so when I looked into it, um, they're only actually three hours behind. Okay. Oh, okay. Which, which isn't a lot, but no. obviously it's a, a long journey there. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be there um, a week be the, before the fight. So I oh, took okay. a, um, a week off work and okay. I'll be there a week before the fight. Maybe. I think when I fought online fighting for the first time in Connecticut, um, Again, like the flight wasn't too bad, but I just didn't give enough for for the time difference. Mm. I couldn't stay awake at night. Yeah. Um. I just needed to go. You know, it was six o'clock American time, mm-hmm. and I, uh, it was about two two in the morning at home, and I was falling asleep at six o'clock at night. So you know, when I was fighting at ten p.m., like yeah. 
I was knackered. It did it did affect me, and obviously I don't want that to be an excuse, and I, I need to myself to be in a hundred percent shape. So you know, I try and do everything I can to be a hundred percent fight day. Right. Yeah, is, is that something that you um, like? On um, you travel around a lot for fighting. Um, <clears throat> where where is the, the 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 best place that you felt comfortable fighting? in? obviously at home, but where yeah. where's another place that you like to call? you know um, a second home a second home yeah i don't know i fight in spain quite a lot uh-huh. um and also ireland um two very random countries but they i have the best reception in in spain and ireland like yeah. i love it it's crazy like the the young you, the young girls there and the messages i get before yeah. um so i'd probably say spain and ireland obviously i fought i fight in holland a lot um uh-huh. not as much anymore um, but I kind of think wherever I go, I meet new people and the Thai boxing community, you know, everyone's so lovely. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to pick just one place. Yeah, right. And your, your Muay Thai career has also, been, you know, has been really successful, obviously. Do you have any ambition to fight like in mixed martial arts at some point in your, in your career? Um, it's never really been a thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a lesson before and... I just um, like you know the groundwork, and mm-hmm. I, I just didn't I didn't enjoy it. And I do Muay Thai because I enjoy it. Um, if I was greedy, then yeah, I'd, I'd go into it. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I want to do something for the love. So yeah. not at the minute. You know, maybe I don't know. I'll grow older and develop a love. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what are your What's your uh, your opinion on some of the fighters that come from more of a striking background, like yourself? Like you have Joanna and Jacek in the UFC. Yeah. And, uh, what are your opinions on her? And then also Gokan Saki. Valentina. Yeah, Valentina and Gokan Saki, yeah. who just signed with the UFC. What's your your, yeah. your your opinion on those guys, those people? Um, I think they're Maybe. great. They were great role models in Muay Thai, and now they've mm-hmm. gone into MMA, and, you know, they're, they're the same. They don't have um, as much trash talk either. I think there's a um, you can kind of see that respect background that they've come from. Mm-hmm. Um and obviously, doing um, our kind of sport, Muay Thai, gives them such an advantage, um, you know, in the cage. And I think they kind of got one up on their opponent, and their opponent knows that they're good, you know, standing up. So, it's, yeah. like, if I was fighting any of them, the first thing I'd want to do is, you know, get them on the floor. And I think yeah. they have a massive advantage, but they, they've earned it and they've deserved it. So, yeah. Right. Awesome. You know, and, and talking about, you know, the sport... You know, social media plays a lot, a big part in in fighting, and, and and we see that you're out there everywhere, like you know, having pictures and and whatnot. Yeah. Um, do you do, do you understand that it's important to put yourself out there, and and um, and do you have a lot of like people that that, that write to you, as, you know, fans and and or any people yeah. who ask you for advice? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I think it's only the last couple of years I have kind of understood um, how important it is yeah. to be. And kind of understand what a role model is and, you know, and how how people do get inspired by, mm-hmm. you know, the things that I do, which I deem normal. Yeah. It, it's crazy. No, it is, um, yeah. And the messages I get now just seem to spur me on a bit more and they give me more confidence and, you know, make me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile, um, you know, because you have your good days and your bad days. And sometimes when you get their messages on, on the bad days, you're like, I remember why I'm doing this. Like, yeah. it's so, so nice. Nice. And if you can, uh, and I don't know if the fans have gotten to see it, but the fans, uh, if you could show them the belts that you have all lined up in your oh. bedroom here. <laughs> Look at this. I, oh don't, I don't do the dust in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a killer for you. Look at that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> then these ones are my junior belts. I don't know if you can oh, see them. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. But I just hide my shorts under it. Is that all of them, or do you have more in storage? Um, no, that's all of them. I don't have any trophies anymore, though. My okay. dad made me give them away. That must be an intimidating thing, like meeting you like, outside and then going to your room for the first time and seeing those belts. <laughs> yeah, like, be I bet it's a bit thing. intimidating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which one of those belts uh, has like a special meaning to you, Phil? Um, I'd probably say the pink infusion one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I know I've got a few now, but... yeah. The first time when I when I won it in London, um, it was a kind of against uh, the the number one in England, Alexis mm-hmm. Rufus at the time. So she was kind of like 
um, the fighter that had been around the block, you know, and I was kind of the up and coming rising star. Yeah. And it was just a massive fight. I've, I sold, I remember selling 111 tickets. Wow. For that fight. Yeah. And yeah. it was in London at the O2 Arena. And like, like when I watch it back now, <laughs> I get goosebumps, you know, from like the crowd's reception. Like if I've ever had a fight and I've just never been so happy in my life when I won wow. that and, and beat her. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Awesome. It yeah. was just great, yeah. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Um, yeah, talk about your ambition in the sport because you have like big promotions here in America, like like Bellator kickboxing, mm. you know, and, yeah. and you also have like Glory Kickboxing, boxing, who's made a pretty big <coughs> dent in America. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk about your ambition in the sport and what do you want to do in a couple, five years from now. Even though I know they have like set for rules, you know. Yeah, set for rules. Yeah. 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 So I, I've been, I had, I have been thinking about this recently, and I feel like. I do what's best for myself. Um, and I think my dad is a really good influence and a really good kind of knowledge on on what we should do and what's best for me. And what is best for me is for me to fight as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, because when I'm not fighting, I don't know what to do with myself. And then I kind of get off track and I get a bit fat and a bit lazy <laughs> and can't be arsed, you know. So I need to stay in the gym and I don't want to stay in the gym unless I've got a fight. And I don't want to overload and have too many fights you know mm-hmm. I'm not stupid and I know my limits now um but I think with certain contracts you can't do that mm-hmm. um but I kind of you know if someone wants me these are these are my rules these are what I you know what what I go by this is what I want and they're not high demands um and if someone accepts that then they accept that and you know as long as everyone's honest with each other yeah. then it's fine and I just want to keep fighting as much as I can um, and inspiring as many people as I can and beating as many people as I can <laughs> <That's really laughs> and traveling to as many countries as I can. Like, honestly, I got, um, it was my birthday not long ago and I got, oh, a, birthday. Birthday. I got a, um, oh, how's I turn it around? I got a globe, like a Ooh, map. Oh, nice. nice. So I pinpointed everywhere I'd been in the world fighting. Wow. You need California. Yes. Go to California. Yeah, so that, <laughs> she's got that, California. Yeah, I want to go oh, to yeah. California. Oh, yeah. And then, like, Australia, um, China, Thailand, and obviously Europe's a lot. What's so one place? It's, it's like, pardon? Oh, what's one place that you want to fight that you haven't fought in? Um, well, definitely California. Cause that, is that, like, L.A.? Yeah. Yeah, you could do yeah. L.A. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's a pretty big place. Well, yeah, we're in L.A. I watch, um, CSI... Um, <laughs> I was obsessed with CSI as uh-huh. well. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and New York, love it. like they would be awesome. I just want to conquer America and just travel as many places. It's so cool. Well, come um, on, we'll get some. I've got an opportunity to do um, a seminar in Philadelphia oh, as nice. well um, in July. Nice. Um, so obviously, you know, different opportunities open different doors when you meet different yeah. people, yeah. and uh, it's just all exciting. So I'm just taking it as I can right. um, at the moment, you know, while it's there, because I can't fight forever. Yeah. Well, coming out late, we have some beers together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're still young, and you have a lot of a career left in you, and you have a lot of fight left in you. So we're yeah. excited to see where that goes. Yeah. Thanks. Um, did you? Uh, we want to thank you for being on the show. Um, but did you want to let the fans know, like, where they can find you on social media, and maybe plug some of your sponsors? Yeah, um, on Instagram, I'm at PrettyKiller3. Um, on Twitter, don't really use it much, but Iman Barlow. Um, mm. On Facebook, my athletes page is Iman Pretty Killer Barlow. Um, thank you to Dr. Blue Headphones, uh, wireless headphones that I run with nice. every morning. Um, th- thank you to Fairtex. And also, I'm wearing my new in fight style Ooh, t-shirts oh, nice. they sent me loads of nice stuff and really cute shorts so thanks to them oh that's cool nice. that's so cool yeah if you want to just send some shirts too <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> send everyone so yeah, yeah yeah you know like like all the friends of your interview like, i think you nailed that like your, your sponsors pretty well yeah you did a pretty good job yeah. with that yeah like most yeah, people I do just like sometimes. <laughs> some, like most people just like say their sponsors and not do anything. Like you do like like an extra commercial. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> now I want those headphones in my ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great talking to you. Uh, and like um, you're really young, you're a um, great fighter, and you have a lot of ambition. So like, yeah. we look forward to your progression, and and hopefully we get 
We'll have you on the show again yeah, soon. Yeah, the show yeah. soon. And you can get to California. We can have some, yeah, some beers. And then well, I think I might be if I'm in the good books with Scott Kent in Lion Fight, might be um, California in February next year. Ooh, maybe. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Hit us up. And I know, I know Lion Fight goes to Vegas a lot, so maybe if you could do that show in there. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, excited. Don't yeah. get too crazy, Thank though. Don't get too crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, take care, and um, thank we'll you for being you on the show. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah, nice one. Thank you. Bye. And that was Iman Barlow. Thank you for her being on the show multiple-time champion, Lion Fight and Infusion champion. Uh, she defends her Infusion title um, this coming uh, July 8th, next Saturday, um, over in Nova Scotia. So it's going to be a great fight. Make sure you catch it. Follow Infusion. Follow her on Instagram. And uh, thank you for uh, Iman Barlow being on the show. And that's uh, next month, not next week. Next month. Did I say? No. Say next week. Oh, it's in month? Yeah, okay. It's in July. I'm yeah. sorry. I thought it was, yeah. June, July, yeah. So it's in July, July eighth. Sorry, that's why I was in work so much. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Forget what day it is. Um, so we have a couple of fight picks to go over. Uh, really uh, good fights this weekend. You have uh, Alafe, which is over here in Burbank, California. We're actually gonna, you know, most likely get to be there and get some content from there and talk to fighters. So Melinda versus Holland. That's on Access TV. Make sure you catch that. Uh, this is June second. You have Cage Warriors on UFC Fight Pass, June 2nd. And you have um, Fight Night Global 68 on UFC Fight Pass. That's on Ju- uh, June 2nd also. Uh, June 3rd, though, is the big one. That's uh, UFC Fight Night, uh, UFC uh, 212, your pay-per-view. Uh, Aldo versus Holloway. Um, really good card here. Top to bottom is not too bad. Um, we'll just go with the, the main card here, but... I like this uh, prelim card, if you haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. You have uh, Rafael, Rafael Sensel versus Marlon Marias in the main event of the mm-hmm. prelims, which is on um, FS1. That's going to be insane right there. It's the, de- the debut of Marlon Marias. Um, and then you have uh, Eric Silva on the card versus Yancy Medeiros, Vitor Balfour, Neymar Marquardt, Claudia Gadelia, Karolina Kowalkovic, um, and, I mean, Jose Aldo, Max Holloway, and much, much more. So... Uh, we'll start with the uh, um, Rafael Sensel versus Marlon Moraes. Interesting uh, fight here. Yeah. Almost forgot that this fight was on the card. This, this is a really hard fight to pick. The debut of Marlon Moraes. <coughs> this, this is a big fight for him because he opted not to go with more money in Bellator and decided to go with bigger competition. With bigger competition in the UFC. He's, he's talked about it for forever. He's finally making the jump. I'm going to go with Rafael Asensio. go Rafael Asensio? Sorry, Mark Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a, this is a kind of an even hard, matchup it's here. Fight, it's a hard fight. And the only reason why I'm picking Rafael is because this is his debut fight on on a big uh, platform like Fox. Yeah. So, I don't know. Even though he has like, experience and stuff, I don't know. It's a different beast when you go to the UFC for the first time. Definitely. And I think... Um, yeah, especially being on the main card of the, the prelims on FS1, mm-hmm. live TV, against a top contender like Rafael Senso. Who's been there, yeah. Who's been who's used to it already. Um, Both have great records, too. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. I'm picking Rafael. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think if Marlon shows up and he's focused, which he tends to be, um, I could see him doing a good job, at even winning. The only thing I see, I, obviously, a sense I was tough, but the 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 octagon jitters, I think, is going to be his biggest test, mm-hmm. and especially because he's been looking forward to it for a long time. Um, I'll, I'll go Marlon Marais. I say he he toughs it out mentally, and I think physically he matches up with Rafael. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting. So I'll go Marlon. Um, Yancy Medeiros versus the returning Eric Silva. What do you think? I like Yancy in this fight. I like Yancy too. I think. Um, I think Eric's a different fighter this time around, especially after uh, that. Mm-hmm. The USADA, you know, days. He's, he's never been consistent, and he hasn't, especially since the USADA came into the picture. He mm-hmm. hasn't looked, even physically, looked the same. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Yancey on this one. I think, I think uh, competitive skill, skill, skill for skill. I think they're fairly even, but I think uh, Yancey has just a little bit more of that natural ability. <laughs> <laughs> um, We'll go straight to the Vitor Belfort fight because I wanted to go with that one. 
Uh, Nate Marquardt versus Vitor Balfour. I'm gonna go with Nate. Nate. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with Nate too. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think uh, he's gonna wear him out and eventually get it to the ground, and then that's it for Vitor. He just once he hits the ground, he just struggles. Mm-hmm. Even though he's got so sick jujitsu, it's just physically he can't handle it anymore. Um, I think. I think Vitor loses this fight. I think it's a winnable fight, but I think. I think Nate's uh, still got some competitive juice in him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then you have the co-main event, Claudia versus Carolina. Um, although um, Claudia's a bigger fighter, I like Carolina a lot. I'm picking her to win this fight. Um, her striking is really good. Um, although Carolina, I mean, although um, Claudia has fought someone like y- Ioana. Twice, yeah. Um, and did and did fairly well against her, I'm still going to pick Carolina. Yeah. I, I, I can see that too, but I like what I like about Claudia is the, the wrestling. I know Carolina's been practicing her wrestling and doing fairly well at it, and she's got some pretty decent takedown defense. Her stand up's awesome. Um, but I think for in a three round fight, I could see Claudia doing it. Giving her trouble she's, she's pressing her up too. against the cage. She's a big girl. Yeah, and at least even if she just controls the pace of the fight and gets the win that way, even if, even if she doesn't land that much damage, I could probably see Claudia winning. Um, Okay, so we go with the main event, Jose Aldo versus Max Holloway it's for the featherweight uh, title unification bout here. You got the two uh, interim titles here. What do you think? It's weird. Well, Jose has a real one, right? Jose Aldo has a real one. Yeah. Max has an interim. Well, or real. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. What do, who do you have? Uh, I, I think the safe pick is Jose Aldo, but I'm going to pick Mac, Max Holloway considering his, his momentum. Um, he's approved as a fighter tremendously, and I can see him uh, getting an, an upper hand against Jose Aldo in this fight. It's not a bad pick. I mean, it's it's hard to bet it back Max Holloway for all those reasons that you said. I think, uh, yeah, he's been on a roll. He's a big fighter. He's talented. He's looked better and better every and fight. He's really, really confident. He's really confident. He's got, yeah, this one's a this one's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think I think the same fight is Jose Aldo because I, I think it's hard for, for me to bet against him. I, I know with I'm, anybody but Connor. Yeah, because he be yeah, and even if him and Connor fought again, like it'd be, it'd be hard, hard yeah. to bet against mm-hmm. him. Yeah, um, I see outside of the division. I think I think Max Holloway is probably his toughest test, honestly. Yeah, be, I mean, and the current state of the division. Yeah, I think yeah, so too. It, yeah. It, if he gets past Max Holloway, then I mean. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a he's a he's a king of the division. I think even even us with the thirteen second knockout aside. Yeah. Um. I'll go with Jose Aldo the safe pick. I'll go with Jose Aldo. <laughs> I think I think I've seen him in his training videos on on embedded and he's fighting guys and that are similar to Max Holloway and I know that that happens all the time but I think I think he comes in prepared. He seems confident. He seems calm. I I. I I think he, he believes Max Holloway is going to be a tough fight, but I don't think he's really sweating it all that much. I mean, in a sense that he doesn't feel confident that he can beat him. So, it, it, yeah. And he's such a pro. And so, yeah. I, I just, I, it's hard. It's just a hard fight to pick. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mentally, I think he's just strong. And skill-wise, I think he, I think he matches up pretty good. So, I'm gonna go, I'll go with Jose Aldo. Mm-hmm. And a five-round fight? Yeah. It's going to be a good one. That's on June uh, June third, pay per view, UFC twelve. I wonder how that's gonna do in terms of, of pay per view sales. Probably not that much. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Cause it's kind of flown under the radar. And aside it's, from, it's, it's one of the bigger cards. Yeah. Think. Aside from the main event, nobody's really talking about any of the others. I mean, Claudio's doing pretty good, and Carolina's doing pretty good in terms of social. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So that's uh, June third. The rest of the fights, make sure you catch that. Most of them are on June second. Um, and that's pretty much our show. Yeah. Thank you to uh, Steve Garcia for being on the show. Catch him uh, July 14th. Uh, thank you to Iman uh, Barlow. Catch her July 8th. Yeah. And uh, make sure you go to themmacomplex.com. Get the new shirts. The new shirts are up on the store. Um, store is up. You can buy them now. Um, we're also going to do a giveaway this week. So make sure you look out for that on social. Um, and then make sure you go to hollerockgear.com. Use a promo code COMPLEX15. You can follow us on social media. You can follow me on Twitter, every complex James, J-A-Y-M-Z. You can follow him on Twitter, every complex Josh. You can follow the show on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
and so uh, pretty much yeah and so yeah like josh said look out put in comics.com look out in, in the online store get our shirts 1995 good shirts cheap uh tight friends about it and uh gives you money <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys for watching the show download on youtube watch itunes on, yeah. watch on youtube i like it stuff. all that stuff and we'll talk about the fight yeah we'll catch you guys next week <laughs>